And it's good to see we we'll go to an event and everybody's happy. So. <laughs> I just want to recognize all our elected officials and city managers standing behind me. That's the uh, Central Mass State delegations here, and uh, and all the elected officials. There's too many to announce, so but welcome. <laughs> Much appreciated. Along with some uh, city councilors, uh, Kenny Merrill Carlson, and Jenny Pasillo, who represents this area, and uh, I just feel incredibly grateful to be here with our state leaders today, Governor, Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, thank you for being here again in the city of Worcester. It's much appreciated in making this announcement here. Se Secretary House and Secretary Augustus, thank you for being here again. Much appreciated. Um, I just want to welcome everybody here to the city of Worcester, home of many innovations. Economic development in Worcester has been vital to our continued success as New England's second largest city. Our community is known for its spirit of collaboration, which is a tribute to our success. We know that it is the key to invest in Worcester, and we are excited to be supported by our partners at the state level who see the potential we have. I am incredibly grateful for the attention and support that we have gotten from the Healy Driscoll administration, not just Worcester, but throughout this Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And we are fortunate to say that we get, our, we get to see our state's leadership frequently here in Worcester. It's now my honor, which I think she's doing a wonderful job here for the, as governor of Massachusetts. Please welcome up Governor Maura Healy. Good morning. It is, um, it's great to be in Worcester. My God, we're so excited to be here. We're so excited um, to be making this announcement uh, on uh, behalf of our entire administration. We've got a lot of money going out to a lot of communities for a lot of great projects that are going to bring about more economic development and better quality of life for our residents and for our businesses. So that's the. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, and uh, I mean, it is, it is really, this, uh, this turnout's outstanding. It's windy, it's windy, and I was sort of like, oh my God, we still have outdoor events. But you know what, it's actually, we should be grateful we still have outdoor events. The weather is that nice, so. It'll be whatever it is with my hair. Um, but the LG and I are really so excited. We think we're working really well together as evidence. We didn't even, we didn't even call each other. <laughs> that, that, did just, that just happened, just happened. We're, you know, 22 months in, in sync. Uh, and we're firing on all cylinders, thanks to the great work of our team. You know your own, Secretary Ed Augustus, doing a great job for us with Housing and Livable Communities. Welcome home. <laughs> Secretary Yvonne Howe, Economic Development, doing an incredible job with an Economic Development Plan. Her team, Under Secretary Ashley Stolba, we have Juan Vega with us as well, who's doing responsible for so many of these grants going out the door. Ann Gobi, no stranger to many of you who we recruited to lead rural communities. That was great. And, and uh, know that we are, we are all in. And to our elected officials, I'll, I'll start with the mayors, Mayor Petty, um, Mayor Squalia, we appreciate you, Mayor Cahill, Mayor McCabe, Mayor Nicholson, forgive me if there are others, but we love, love, love uh, working with you. And trust me, with Kim Driscoll right by my side in everything we do, uh, mayors, you are always, always right there in the front of, mayors matter. And that extends to our city managers, our town administrators, town managers, city manager Eric Batista here. Thanks for, uh, thanks for hosting us. Of course, uh, we get to give out the money, but it is, in fact, the legislature that funds this. So thank you all for that. Um, Rep, um, Rep O'Day in the district, Senator Kennedy, Senator Moore, Rep Mahoney, Rep LaBeouf, Rep Donahue, uh, Rep Scarsdale. Who else is here that I'm missing? Senator Gomez from the 413. Yep, we got money going out there. That's good. Yeah. Rep. Kilcoin. Repres Representative Slotnick as well. Okay, great. So, great representation. Thank you, legislature, for uh, all that. Uh, all that. I, I, yeah, Rep. Kilcoin. Yeah. 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 From Clinton. I love it. Um, 
Look, a lot of great stuff getting done, okay? We've got a major housing bond bill, biggest in our state's history ever. I was out not too long ago in Lemonster announcing the most comprehensive veterans package ever before, the HERO Act, as we come up on Veterans Day. We're excited about what's gonna come with a climate bill. It's gonna also an economic development bill in that climate bill. And then, of course, economic development with the work of so many of you um, we were able to put together with the legislature a really great bill, and I look forward to that getting to uh, getting to my desks soon. So here today in Worcester, heart of Massachusetts, heart of the Commonwealth, home to so much innovation, home to um, a community and communities that we love. And you know, I I want you to know I'm really proud of where we are as a state because as we stand here today, we've been ranked the number one state in the country for education, for innovation, for access to health care best place to raise a family, best place to live if you're a woman, best place to have a baby. Why? Because we have a great quality of life, we've got economic opportunity, we're on the move, we're on offense. We're on offense and it's why people are staying here, it's why businesses wanna come here, it's why we're looking to grow here, okay? And um, essential to that is doing what we're doing today with these one-stop grants, making it more possible for people to do things that they know they need to do in their communities. What I personally love about these projects is they're all, they're from the communities. They're from the community leaders and planners and those who know their communities best and what those communities need. And so we're really thrilled about this. I think we've got a total of, I don't know, $162 million, 313 projects covering 171 of our great cities and towns. And we're investing right here in Greendale, which will be the manufacturing job engine that we want it to be. It's gonna be great to see that coming back soon. We're also investing in the Worcester Memorial Auditorium and the AI Innovation Center. It's gonna create um, opportunities to connect residents and our universities to uh, this fast growing AI field and STEM field. We're investing in collaborative workspaces at the Institute for Energy and Sustainability. Yes, you and Techno Capita, uh, Technocopia. Also investing in the Worcester Housing Authority to support 150 new affordable homes. The Downtown Worcester Business Improvement District to support our small businesses and the Central Mass Regional Planning Commission to keep this region expanding its vision. MassWorks grants help us to upgrade transportation, utilities, important infrastructure. Housing Works is a program that we created last year specifically to help communities meet their housing needs. We've got other programs that support rural development, urban neighborhoods, downtowns, main streets, environmental cleanup, and so much more. So really pumped to be here today. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to um, the best teammate I could ever have, and that is our fabulous Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll. Uh, this is a really fun day when you're in local government, so uh, happy Community One Stop for Growth Day, Worcester! <laughs> And thank you, Gov. Um, certainly always great to be in Worcester with City Manager Batista, Mayor Petty, and so many others to delegation. You know, if you're in local government, we all have this day circled on our calendar. Like you can tell from the turnout here, folks want to be here to secure these grants, to understand all the hard work that you put into making a project become reality. It's about the resources that we're able to deliver today. And as someone who's been in your seats, anxiously awaiting a grant announcement, building all the pieces to take what was an idea on a drawing board and make it a reality, that's what we're uplifting and empowering. Um, it's a day when, the pro when projects that people have worked on for years, the one we're on right now, several administrations, work through lots of individuals with a really cool vision and building all the pieces to make it happen, that's what today is and that's why it's so huge to have so many folks here that have all been part of these projects. When you have large scale or even small scale projects, it involves community members at every level, state partners, all queued up supporting the same vision and now having the resources and, and the fuel to make it happen. I think the governor mentioned some of the impacts these grants are gonna have, like amazing to be able to have economic development, housing, the ideas around arts and creative economy and putting all of those things in a place that builds strong and vibrant communities. But there's a couple other data points that really showcases both the competitiveness that we're going for with these grants and the opportunities. This year we received 756 applications. 
I think that's the most we've ever received at one time. So local leaders are on it. They're recognizing, hey, if we have an idea, it can become a reality if we work on putting the pieces together. 510 unique municipalities or organizations with projects in 229 communities. And believe me, when we look at these, we wish we could fund them all. We fund a lot, but think about all the others that we haven't been able to get to, that we hope we can get to next year, continuing to build this strong pipeline for economic development, housing, vibrancy. This was uh, a competitive process, and as the governor mentioned, 171 communities receiving funds, including 40 communities who have never received a one-stop grant before, right? <laughs> And that's, you know, that's super important. We're trying to build a commonwealth that's more affordable, more competitive, more equitable, thinking about ways that we in state government can uplift and empower the very work you're doing every day. And it shows how hard all of you are working. One other point was real regional equity. This year we're awarding the most funding ever to the Rural Development Fund. That is for only for rural communities. Why that's really important, we want to empower rural communities. They have lots of opportunities. They have to do all the same challenges that our bigger cities and towns do, but often without the staff, without the resources. When we think about opportunities, we think about our rural communities. That's why we stole Ann Gobi and helped make her the director of rural communities. And she is beating the bushes in getting us a lot more grants. So empowering r these rural communities is a big part of the grants that we're uh, announcing today. And then we're also obviously trying to build vibrant downtowns and neighborhoods, unlocking economic potential in every region of this Commonwealth. The governor and I have the good fortune to be able to travel around all 351 cities and towns. We see the unique opportunities that exist. We see what makes places special. Communities certainly all have some strength, some opportunity, and this is the fuel that helps unlock it. We're really proud to be here as we think about housing, opportunity, creating new jobs. We're just thrilled to be able to celebrate with all of you the richness and goodness of what makes Massachusetts special. And it starts with an idea, it's fueled by resources, but it really what drives this is all of you. People on the ground, both public sector and private sector with a shared vision, trying to align and move things forward. So congratulations on all the progress you're making, all of these projects. We can't wait to come to the groundbreakings and the ribbon cuttings and really support and celebrate what makes Massachusetts a great place to live. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to the person who's responsible for each of you having a blue band to put on your wrist that says Team Massachusetts. And that's our outstanding Secretary of Economic Development, Yvonne Howe. Um, thank you, Lieutenant Governor, uh, and thank you, Governor, and thank all of you. This is an incredible moment, uh, and I am the annoying person who's um, constantly talking about Team Massachusetts and who's given you all these blue bracelets. We don't have a huge budget in state government, so this is what we can afford with taxpayer dollars. <laughs> Uh, but I want you all to know, if you missed it, the governor did give Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal Team Massachusetts. So they are on Team Massachusetts also. Um, but um, the reason why we, why I talk about Team Massachusetts all the time, and we love Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal, but what, they're not really the reason why we have the best team. Team Massachusetts is the best team because of all of you here today. We have the best captains of Team Massachusetts, our governor, lieutenant governor, our fearless leaders. We have the best legislators. Thank you so much for all the work that you do. The best mayors, the best city councilors, the best folks on the ground working in our communities and our educational systems, our nonprofits, our big companies, our small businesses, our farms. We have the best team. That's, that's why we talk about Team Massachusetts. So, and I, I wanna especially say thank you to Team Worcester because I come out to Worcester all the time. I started coming out here in college when I rode on Lake Quinsigamond and I've come out a ton in this job and Team Worcester is very special. When I think about teamwork and collaboration and getting things done, led by, of course, our um, amazing uh, Secretary Augustus in his previous life, you all are a real example of what we can accomplish together. And there's a special part of the team I just wanna call out. So I get to come up and you know, talk in these uh, settings, but um, many of you know I, this is my first role in state government, and every day I'm able to do what I do because we have an incredible team in economic development. So, this, this team has done all the work to get us today. So Undersecretary Ashley Stolba, Juan Vega, and Gobi, um, Pat in the back. And, and we have many of our economic development team out here. We let them out of the office for once. Helena, John, John Way, Lucas, um, Hannah, and Maggie, and our mass development partners too. They are the ones who do all the work. And I will tell you, they take it very seriously. As the Lieutenant Governor said, this is a long, year-long process and it's way oversubscribed. So everyone who's here, you all know, you are the creme de la creme. 
And this team in economic development, I'm in the office, they're there early in the mornings, they're there late at night, they take this very seriously. They go through all the applications. They work in, co in coaching and counseling and helping you get all the right information in. And then they compare all the trade-offs and they work so hard to make sure that every single project is the best use of our funds and we're gonna get returns. And so thank you to that very special part of our team, Massachusetts. Now. <laughs> so we have the best team, Team Massachusetts, Team Worcester and all of our team. And today's a really special day. This is a day of celebration. So um, as the governor mentioned, this, we are going to be uh, investing $161 million in all of uh, your towns and, and uh, cities and in all of your awesome projects. And in the Healy School Administration, we've now invested over $325 million across 237 towns and cities across so many projects. Um, last year, we did this economic development plan surprisingly called Team Massachusetts, uh, Leading Future Generations, and the plan had three big pillars. It was really aimed at thinking about how can we as a state continue to lead, not just now, but for many future generations. How can we be the best place for every human to start a family, start their career, for e the best place for every company to start here, stay here, expand here? And three big pillars. So I talk about the plan everywhere I go across the state, and people get very excited about the second pillar, and it's about talent and all of our wicked smart people, and people get really excited about that. People also get really excited about the third pillar. It's about sectors, and they want to talk about all the sexy stuff, life sciences and climate tech and AI and robotics. But the first pillar of the plan and where the plan starts is fundamentals. Because you can't do any of the other stuff without the fundamentals. And today's $161 million investment is the investment in fundamentals. Now, some people, yes, exactly, thank you. Some people may not think it's sexy, um, but these are the projects that are actually the most important. So I, when I first took on this job, I've heard all the names of the programs and I review all the grants, uh, you know, when they get passed to me from the team. They have all these names, Site Readiness and Urban Renewal and UPP and all these acronyms and things. And I, I wasn't really exactly sure what these were, but then I traveled around the state and it is, it is really memorable when you're in a small town in Western Mass and you're in a building that was a dilapidated mill that's gotten converted because of a Mass Works grant and people have tears in the eye, their eyes talking about how this used to be an eyesore that was you know, a terrible spot in town and is now the center where there's music and there's art and there's food and there's small businesses and there's entrepreneurs and it's now brought new life to that town. It is, um, it is interesting when you go out and people get so passionate and emotional about a turnabout. And they talk about how they've been working on turnabouts for a, more than a decade and how much work it took to get everybody aligned as a team to agree and then to get the funding for MassWorks to create a turnabout that's now much more safe, much better for the climate, much better for small businesses, much better for kids. That's what this is about. It's about the fundamentals. And we're so proud to be able to, uh, to make these awards today. And I was thinking about Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal and, um, and the governor and, and probably many of you saw on Tuesday night, uh, the Celtics had their first opener of the season. And they were in the garden and they got to lift banner 18. It's a pretty big moment. And winning a championship is a, is this that takes a lot of work. You know what else takes a lot of work? The Greendale Revitalization Project. <laughs> and that takes a lot of work and a lot of dedication and all of the projects you have take a lot of work. And we don't, get, we don't get a duck boat, we don't get the garden, we don't get the same thing, but I do wanna say, um, I did in Hatfield uh, a couple weeks ago, I got this medal, which I'm gonna put on myself. I got this medal from Hatfield for Senator Comerford for a sewage project that is changing the town of Hatfield. And Yesterday, I was with the governor at an event. We saw the owner of the Celtics, and he showed me his very large emerald rings. I, I prefer this medal on sewage. Um, so I'm going to end just by saying congratulations, thank you, and also I'm going to say what Jason Tatum said in the garden, which I thought was very appropriate. His words were, enjoy this moment, and let's do it again. Yeah. Go team Massachusetts. I, I still always forget. And now I get to introduce my awesome partner and teammate, Secretary Augustus. And, and, and son of Worcester. So I don't have a medal. Um, 
but I'm going to keep trying hard, and maybe next time I'll, I'll be able to have a medal when I'm up here. Uh, thank you, Secretary Howe. Uh, it's great to be home uh, in the city of Worcester. Uh, I want to thank Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for your leadership, uh, for always putting our communities first. I want to thank my colleague, Secretary Howe, uh, for being such a great partner uh, in the cabinet and our two secretariats work so closely together, not only on these grant uh, announcements, but on so many things because we know the intersection of housing and economic development and our competitiveness as a state and how they're so inextricably linked. And so it's great to have such a great partner as Secretary Howe and her team. And I would like to ask the HLC team who've been involved uh, on the housing side of this process to just raise your hand and if we could recognize all of them and thank them for their hard work. Thank you for what you do every day. Uh, from the Canal District to Main Street to right here in Greendale, Worcester continues to be a shining example of what communities can do when they look with optimism to the future. And I'm glad to see the continued momentum happening here. Today's announcement is a tremendous boost for our communities from Boston to the Berkshires and from the North Shore to the Cape and Islands. But it also unlocks the new housing we need across the state. Whether it's supporting our housing production plans, support for a town's MBTA community zone uh, project, or support for road and sidewalk replacements or improvements, these funds are vital to unlocking uh, the uh, homes that we need for workers and for our families and for the people who keep Massachusetts running. We know our local communities need a partner in the state. You are not in this alone. Which is why in last year, Governor Healy created the Housing Works Infrastructure Program to increase the supply of affordable housing by providing direct support for affordable housing projects. But there are barriers to building housing we need, and Housing Works assists our municipalities to overcome these barriers through grants and public infrastructure projects. Projects like Ferry Street Housing and Pedestrian Infrastructure Project in East, East Hampton, the Thatcher Street Affordable Housing Project in Brockton, and Phase 2 of Curtis Apartments right here in the city of Worcester. <laughs> Today we are awarding Housing Works grants to 12 communities that will support or preserve 2,200 units of housing. These grants will help advance housing development in construction and in the planning phases. These grants will encourage housing production, contribute to the creation of livable and sustainable communities. And in addition to these awards, today we are awarding housing choice grants to another 22 communities and community planning grants to another 33 communities. Congratulations to each of you. Uh, this site, this location is really special to me. Uh, Craig Blaze, who you're going to be hearing from uh, in a few moments, who uh, is leading the effort to revitalize this spot. His dad and my dad worked at Heal Machine, which is about two buildings over for 40 years. This was an economic engine for generations of folks in Worcester and beyond. People came to work every single day in all of these buildings and plants. And as times changed and economies evolved and industries uh, adapted, this site wasn't the industrial engine that it once was. Uh, but coming together as a city, coming together with private uh, developers and with the state partnering, this, position, this uh, campus is being repositioned in a way that's going to create future jobs. So future people are going to be able to come to work every day, earn a living, buy a home, uh, and contribute uh, to their dreams and their family's dreams. So it's such a special opportunity to be at this particular location for this announcement today. And it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce someone who I worked with every day uh, that I was city manager, who succeeded me in the role and is doing an amazing job uh, leading this city, city manager Eric Batista. Good morning, everyone. I have a bunch of notes here, but because I'm one of the last speakers, everything has been said, so I don't have much to say. Um, but I do want to do a quick exercise. All the award recipients, please raise your hand. 
Just see that. If you're taking pictures, take a picture of that. So on behalf of all of you, because I have the opportunity as the administrator of the city of Worcester, I just want to, on behalf of all of us, thank you. Thank you, Governor Healy. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor Disco. Thank you to the delegation. Um, I have to thank my, the mayor and the city council for their contribution and support here in the city. Uh, thank you to Craig Blaze and the partnerships here in the city, the Worcester Housing Authority, the Auditor Auditorium, American uh, uh, Heritage Foundation, and others. For us here in the city of Worcester, um, we, don't, we don't stay silent. We, we try to nag as much as we can. We're, and we're good at it. I think many of you do the same thing. That's probably why we're here. Um, but we also doesn't, we don't like to just sit. Uh, we like to get to work and get to work pretty quickly and always keep the ball rolling. Um, I had the great pleasure of working under Ed Augustus and he taught me a great thing that always, always, always show up. And when you show up, things get done. And so I appreciate all of you for coming to the city of Worcester. On behalf of the city of Worcester, we, we extend our, our appreciation to all of you. Uh, to all the partners in municipal government, you're doing the work. It's really hard work. It's really, really hard work. But now that we got the funding, we, <laughs> now we got more work to do. Uh, so I just want to say to you and also to say to us here in the, in, in the city of Worcester, let's get to work and continue to build our communities as strong as possible. Thank you to all of you. Secretary Hell, I have the same issue. Um, I, yeah, she got a medal. So I get the pleasure to introduce uh, Craig Blaze, President and CEO of Worcester Business Development Corporation. They serve a pivotal role here in the city of Worcester in bringing development uh, and bringing revitalization to the city. And, it is, and if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here right now. 51 acres of land being able to be developed. And I also want to give a shout out to St. Gobain for their contributions in this project. So again, introducing Greg Blaze. <clears throat> well, we heard about Barclay and we heard about Tatum and raising the back. You are in Cousy country yeah. here. Uh, Bob Cousy lives just about two miles from here. Uh, and he's just been an incredible, incredible advocate of Worcester. And thank you, Governor, for your friendship with him. Uh, and to see him there, to see the flag being raised, it's just a special time. Uh, we run around this site, uh, for those of you in economic development who do brownfields cleanup and wholesale demolition on 51 acres, it's like we're running out the clock, running around this site here. Um, it's just an incredible project. But I want to mention how important this is in terms of what this investment of $2.8 million in this project, you are sitting in the location where once 7,000 people worked. Uh, as uh, Secretary Augustus mentioned, he stole my story about my dad and his dad, but that's okay, uh, it, it, it meant a lot. Um, 7,000 people worked here, generations, kids grew up as part of the workforce, people earned a really good living here. And I think Worcester's success is we've got the right recipe. Um, we've got 10 colleges and universities that have 35,000 college students here. We are building 5,000 units of housing here. We need a place to create jobs. And this is the location that the WBDC is going to stay laser focused with the city of Worcester in partnership with the state. Uh, and we're going to create a lot of jobs here. What does the $2.8 million represent and how does that work? I want to thank the governor and the lieutenant governor and Secretary Howe and their team. They put us in touch early on with Quinton Palfrey, with Will Rasky. We had to figure out a way. They can't do it alone. We needed the federal resources. So the 2.8 unlocked $2.8 million of federal money, which is, unlocks $51 million of investment here to prep this site, to get this ready, to accept somewhere between 500 and 700 million of private investment to take a brown site and turn it into a green site. That's an incredible, incredible story. And we're well on our way, uh, Governor, of really living up to your principles and the policies that you set forward. Just to give you an example of this 
started here. This isn't the nice part of it, the tearing down the buildings. We are using 11 rail cars to move 10,000 tons of demolition debris off the site, which eliminates 500 trucks from going through the neighborhood. Uh, that's an environmental win just to start the project, and over 90% of the materials are being recycled. That's an incredible start. So, so we look forward, we appreciate, thank you so much. I see a lot of friends out here in economic development. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you to the administration. Secretary Howe, couldn't have said These are the fundamental pieces that make these projects happen. It's, it's not the stuff that gets all the glory, in it, but it allows for the ribbon cutting to, to actually happen. And Governor and Lieutenant Governor, Secretary Howe, we invite you. You will be here for all the ribbon cuttings uh, on this great, incredible project. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so now you can take a picture. Yeah, so I think we're going to ask any of the award recipients to come to the side of the building, right back there, to help us with a group photo. Yeah. All right, did I, I do my job? You did All your right, job. Yeah. That's great. Thank you.